Namaste and greetings. I, Ishika Chaudhary, researcher at IMPRI, Impact and Policy Research Institute, Prabhav Evamniti Anusandhan Sansthan, Nay Delhi, extend my warm welcome to you all to IMPRI hashtag web policy talk. Today, we have gathered for a panel discussion on the topic, labor movements in India, challenges and the way forward as a part of the series, the state of employment and livelihoods Hashtag Employment Debate by IMPRI. Moderator for the session is Professor K. R. Sham Sundar. He is Professor at HRM Area, XI, Xavier School of Management, Joshepa. And he is also Visiting Professor at IMPRI. We welcome you, sir. As a special mm -hmm. invitee, we have Sayyid Sultan. He is special work and work team, South Asia. International Labor Organization, I.O. We welcome you, sir. As panelists, we have Asim Roy. He is founding general secretary of New Trade Union Initiative. We welcome you, sir. Dr. Sonia George. She is secretary of Self-Employed Women's Association, Seva, Kerala. We welcome you, ma'am. Professor A.V. Joss. He is honorary visiting professor at Center for Development Studies, Kerala. We welcome you, sir. And next we have Sheikh Salahuddin. He is National General Secretary of Indian Federation of App-Based Transport Workers and founder state president of Telangana Gig and Platform Workers Union. We welcome you, sir. We all look forward to learning from the esteemed gathering. Now I hand over the proceedings to Sham Sundar, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ishika, for the introductory for, the, for introducing the panelists and myself. I'm extremely pleased uh, to be the moderator of this panel discussion organized by IMPRI, Indian Social Institute, New Delhi, and Counterview on the theme, Labor Movement, Labor Movement in India at 75, Challenges and the Way Forward is a part of the uh, series called the State of Employment and Liv Livelihoods, hashtag employment debate, which has been organized by IMPRI, ISI and Counterview for quite some time. I've had the pleasure of uh, having participated as a panelist, as well as moderating several of the web uh, of this kinds of pro these kinds of programs. I'm indeed very happy uh, to be the uh, to act as a moderator of this uh, very important uh, uh, topic. What are the challenges that labor movement at 75 uh, faces face, and what could be the way forward? So we have uh, a, a very illustrious uh, set of panelists, Professor A.V. Jose, currently. Uh, honorary visiting professor at the at CDS Trivandrum. Formerly, he worked close to three decades uh, in ILO. And we have Mr. Ashim Roy, founding general secretary NTUI, Dr. Sonia Jaj, secretary Seva Kerala, uh, Mr. Sultan, um, ACTRA, ILO New Delhi office, and Sheikh Salauddin, national general secretary of IFAT, and uh, Founder President of Telangana Gig and Platform Workers Union. As a moderator, I thought I would uh, flag some issues which I request the panelists to consider taking forward if they found, uh, found them to be of merit. The first and the foremost uh, challenge that I find which is contemporaneous is an, the existential right of life and livelihood not only of workers, but of the entire humanity. And workers constitute a good proportion of the humanity. So what could labor unions, workers organizations, civil society organizations could do in order to prevail over the governments, the global organizations, both financial and the United Nations and various other bodies to secure 
security, right to life, and right to livelihood, which in a sense are intertwined. What could the trade unions do on a wider scale, in a in a in a very broad sweep? That would be I, for me is the immediate existential challenge that the labor movement faces. May I also add, I when when uh, Dr. Arjun asked me about this topic, I said not trade union movement but labor movement in the sense that. We started with the labor movement and matured into trade union movement. And now thanks to globalization, we are in a sense, we need to broaden labor movement, not in the primitive sense, but in a modern sense, so as to be inclusive of all kinds of workers organizations and human rights based organizations so in that sense, I use the term labor movement in, an, in that umbrella sense. The second one is quite ideological again. You know, the pandemic has been used by the neoliberal institutions, including the state, to push ahead the neoliberal reform agenda, which, which is quite evident if we simply flip through the pages of the various government pronouncements, pronouncements made by government of India since 2020 March, the, the, the main things that come to me are the structural reforms, privatization, corporatization, mergers, monetization of public assets, etc. And also, Pushing through, pushing the labor codes up, along with the farmers' bills, which I'll come to that. That, that brings me to the third one. The former, farmers' protests, the success of them have shown the way, probably a way for the working class movement to try to imitate, notwithstanding the limitations that the working class movement can face. I'm sure the panelists would be alive to the, the challenges in the process of imitating farmers' protests by the industrial working class. Now, if sustained, persistent, long duration struggle that has been that that, that was waged by farmers proved to be impossible or implausible for the industrial working class, what else can it do? What else, what innovative methods apart from annual rituals of going on countrywide protests, what else could, can they do? Of course, IFAT has shown the way along with uh, legal activists like Ms. Indra J. Singh, Gayatri Singh and others that legal contestation for social security rights. Can that be one window that it could look, look, look at? And as I speak today, I that there are two important news items that I that I saw. One is that the retail inflation, consumer price, CPI based inflation rate has inching as just is touching 6%, 5.99 to be precise. And an article in, in the Indian Express, which, was, which came about eight, eight hours ago, show, argued that unemployment in December 2021 touched 7.91%. So unemployment is stubborn, looking quite stubborn, particularly urban unemployment. Labor force participation in India is low, lower than the comparable emerging countries. We have inflation, both retail inflation at 6%, slightly, I mean, it is breaching the comfort zone of RBI. And wholesale inflation has gone beyond 10%, around 12%. So we have this uh, uneasy economic, macroeconomic picture. The budget is on the anvil. And to me, the biggest issue in, that the labor movement uh, pay, uh, you know, faces 
is a modern issue that of identity of people as workers of people who are participating in the gig economy we call them as workers are they legally workers the millions of anganwadi asha workers the government calls them as volunteers are they workers so we are facing on the one hand we have the conventional sector which is face, facing numerous assaults on the historically established labor rights on the other hand we are facing modern issues such as that i mean the very identity the vast majority of informal economy informal workers who people who are working in the informal sector the modern sector like the gig i mean one of the industrial bodies has said that by 2025 there would be around 450 million gig jobs kinds of gig jobs i mean this is i mean really i mean there, there seems to there there seems to be a, a fantastic piece of info, news news to me but i would i have not looked into that particular uh, information information base and the trade unions national trade unions have waged more than 20 country wide protests since 1992 the trade unions estimate puts it somewhere between 100 million and 200 uh, between 100 million and 250 million there is a huge mass movement of the kind that the world has not wouldn't have seen anywhere in the globe but still the labor codes have been pushed through structural reforms have been announced and air india is on sale and lic ipo is going to come in kick uh, come in soon and today the government has said, yeah, has said that it would buy stakes in vodafone come going to the aid of uh, vodafone on the other hand on the one hand it is going to the aid of vodafone on the other hand it says it needs to withdraw from the economy i mean it's it's sending it's sending clearly new liberal signals now how do we tackle these challenges now one one i i just have only one uh, recommendation to the labor movement i would like the panelists to consider now the trade union movement has broadened that struggle agenda from the core the trade union issues to the broader economic social issues like ilo it had 180 or uh, 83 or conventions in and, and you know then the global community asked them asked ilo to pick up core conventions and it came up with eight conventions on four subjects i don't need to repeat them similarly can the tra- can the labor movement look at three to four core issues and wage a persistent struggle which would also give them a sense of legitimacy i i just want to list them for example identity of all the people who are in the world of work as workers that is number 1 number 2 clear enforcement of enforcement and entitlement of minimum wages easily accessible universal social security and universal occupational and safety and health you know yes today in uh, indian express carried a news item wherein a zomato worker wo- worker's vehicle was run over by suv i mean the i mean the zomato can say that uh, there is an insurance policy in in place but the way the zomato the gig platforms operate that seems to be pushing the, these people under unusual kinds of li- life risks and livelihood risks and look at these four three or four i have just flagged them as an example and this will gain according to me to the movement a huge sense of legitimacy who who would deny this you know critical minimum labor rights identity minimum wage social security right to life and livelihood and just go on a huge strike which may give which may which may probably give it yeah a sense of success even the government cannot uh, you know go on a back foot on these things so with this preliminary remarks i now invite professor av jose to share his perspective thank you very much once again to impri isi and counterview thanks 
Thank you. Um, I guess I am audible and uh, it's a pleasure, it's a privilege being here uh, to talk on a subject I worked on for many years. Um, when I was with the ILO, I had the privilege of coordinating a major under undertaking, which essentially looked into the future of trade unions. And it was titled Organized Labor in the 21st Century. We caught uh, a large number of very prominent union leaders all over the world and representatives of the employer community to interact with us on this particular project and share ideas about how they perceive the future. So whatever I say has some, some relationship with what I learned in that project. And therefore, let me say at the outset, I'm entirely in agreement with the, the minimal core agenda, which all people concerned about labor should pursue in India. Let's be aware of the fact we are too big a country, too heterogeneous a mix of cultures to, to have centralized, unified solutions. And when we say that the state, the central state has failed on such and such fronts, I mean, I think we are essentially talking about impossible things. Ideally, one should focus on a minimum, a bare minimum. That's very much in conformity with the traditional mandate of the trade unions. They were institutions of the industrial society, which came to the fore to answer the social question of Europe that surfaced in the 18th and 19th centuries in the course of industrialization. Factors, the circumstances that led to endemic poverty, profound deprivation, unequal relations at work, and misery, malnutrition, and all those compounded together which defined the social problem of industrializing Europe. And the unions came forward with solutions to that. They walked, they worked, with workers, trudged a long, lengthy, laborious way, witnessed the entire transformative process, campaigned for a, a, a new political reality wherein the rights and entitlements of workers were given paramount importance and framed within the framework, constitutionalized within the framework of social democratic societies. They evolved rules and regulations binding on workers, mainly of the industrialized world, authored a legal architecture, which was meant to be emulated in the rest of the world. But then it was a long, laborious journey, wading through the sweat and blood of workers all over the world. In the process, taking them literally to use a biblical expression, the very promised land, and the unions played an extremely important role in attaining that and uh, created the institutional safeguards of reasonably affluent, within reasonably affluent societies, which safeguarded the interests of workers for which they built on the material prosperity of industrialization and created the economic space from which they created the political space 
for participation of workers in, in creating new institutional and safeguards with the net result. The industrial society came to imbibe a number of minimum um, um, requirements, minimum wages, solidarity wages, um, minimum wages that ensured floor level was maintained, solidarity wages which ensured that the inequalities did never come up, social security benefits that ensured secure living to workers. In the process, what they ensured was the stability of industrial economies and facilitated the creation of institutions for emulation in, in the world of work everywhere. And the ILO was a crucial stage wherein that emulation, that adaptation was fostered. Building up of the, the, the organizing strength and mobilizing capacity, which gave the workers the capacity to influence decisions in the industrial society was a remarkable achievement of the unions. And that golden age between the second quarter of the 20th century to the end of the third quarter, I mean, you know, just over about 50 years, that was the golden age wherein these institutions flourished. And they were in a position to say that these are good enough to be adopted in the rest of the world. But then came globalization and dented the whole process through a spanner into the works and created deep anguish and suspicion about the feasibility of institutions to safeguard the interests of workers. And whatever we saw and what followed was something that, that, that made us all despondent about the future of the working class. We realized that the world, the emerging world of work was one where the institutional safeguards were not going to be, to be, to be kept alive. And therefore, the challenge before the unions, I would imagine, is to go back to the square, to the scratch, start from square one, focus on the very same tasks. They provided answers to the social questions of the industry, the industrializing societies, and start with them. Focus on those workers at the lower end of, of the workforce people who just don't belong to the organized sector anymore, people who are deprived of the benefits of formal relations at the workplace, and they are swelling in large numbers. The, the outgrowth of contract workers, the gig workers, people outside the protective umbrella of the state, I think it's time we refocused attention on them all over India, make them part of a political process wherein their minimal interests would be protected by all the parties concerned, the central and the state governments together, because it's an extremely important political constituency of beneficiaries. The extent to which minimum wages can be accorded to them. S minimum social safety regulations can be extended to them. Social safety regulations involving retirement pensions that ensure them a living through and beyond the working lives, healthcare, housing, all these, all these requirements can be met through the diversion of resources of the state. We always come across questions, where is, the, where is the money for that? The fact of the matter is the society we belong to harbor such deep inequalities and has the wherewithal.
to meet these requirements to take care of the interests, the economic interests of the poor. Therefore, let's come back to the very old process where the economic interests, the economic space we are caught to them, build into a political space, and they effectively become partners in the shaping of institutions that take care of a social floor, a floor below which the market forces will not ever drive them down on the wages front, on the habitat front, on the comforts front, on the pensions question, on the healthcare front. All these together have got to be guaranteed by the state with allocation of resources which are well within the reach of a developing society like ours. And there's no point in pretending that we don't have the money to do that. It's a question of a political will being there. And that's why I think it's a political process that we have got to be engaged in. And therefore, the beneficiaries will certainly be part of that political process, which in turn will come to the kind of a business model which makes the unions self-financing entities with a prominent place in the administration and management of the very same institutions, wage enforcement, income security, social security, all these are to be administered with the participation of unions like it's being done in the Scandinavian countries. And therefore, the collapse of the membership, which people see all over the world, the organizing strength and mobilizing capacity of unions is not much of a problem so long as they have the kind of a preeminent position in managing the institutions that safeguard the interests of workers. And I think that's what we have got to work at when you talk about challenges before the unions in the coming decades. This is where I think one has got to focus on, protect the interests of the most weak and vulnerable in the labor markets, whose ranks are swelling, whose numbers are, are, are exploding. And, but then there is a ray of hope in the future in the sense the demography has peaked, the demographic explosion has peaked and we are certainly going to reap what is called the demographic dividend of increased participation of men and women in the labor force. And therefore, what has got to be, to be ensured is the very minimum, the floor that has got to be built up. And that is an eminently feasible task for the epistemic community, the scholars, who want to work on it and the activists down below and the, and the large, large array of concerned social activists. And I'm sure, sure Sonia, who would come in later, will talk about the kind of work she's doing among women, especially in the domestic work sector, and where we have got to make sure that the interests of these people are protected through, through legislative action of the, the central and state governments. And that's where I think the campaign has to start and it has got to be part of a completely political mobilization process. And I would think this as the kind of an idea, the challenge for trade unions, before trade unions in the years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jos. For both uh, the historical uh, perspective and asking the trade union movement to draw lessons from the history, and also, uh, you know, arguing very persuasively that unless the trade unions drew lessons from history, the so-called social question that was that raged in the 18th and 19th century, which resulted in the kind of labor rights, minimum wage to collective bargaining rights to state assured social security. So that is that that kind of a, that heralded 
a kind of a widened labor, widened and deep rooted labor movement. And that is what that that could be a solution if the trade unions and various other organizations would go back to the, the marginalized, vulnerable, on the margin and beyond the margin workers, organize them, mobilize them, and you know, probably uh, you know, impart a sense of uh, political, uh, you know, a political organizational aspect to it. And then one could ask for a non-negotiable social flow, which the market cannot attack at, attack attack on. And of course, you also, like an economist, very clearly argued that the the fiscal conservative arguments that there are not enough resources to provide the social minimum social flow, and you argued that if there are uh, tremendous inequalities that are prevalent in the economy, that inequalities, I mean, sol sol solving the inequalities could be a source of financing the social minimum flow is, an, is a very important argument that the labor movement needs to catch on and tell the society and the government, look, you solve inequality, you, and that will finance the social minimum flow that the labor movement is asking for. So there are three challenges that Professor Jose has uh, put, for, put before the trade union movement or the larger labor movement. Look at the vast majority of uh, vulnerable workers, informal workers. Number two, create a framework for agitation. And thirdly, look for political solutions. And these are valuable lessons, valuable suggestions recommendations coming from one who has worked for long for a long time both as an economist as an and also as an ILO official highly placed ILO official I'm sure they would be considered by the labor movement with all the merit that they deserve with these remarks may now um, request uh, Mr. Sheikh Salauddin to share his thoughts on uh, on the challenges that the gig economy workers are facing over to you mr sheikh thank you so much sir giving this opportunity uh, thank you each and everyone uh, we can speak hindi sir yes of course yeah baat kar sakte ji agar ja सर तो प्रोफेसर साहब बहुत खुले अंदाज में कहे थे आज जो आज के तारीख में हमें ट्रेड यूनियनिस्ट भी करना चाहिए करना होगा और आगे हमारे सामने है सो चैलेंजेस तो मैं इसको लेके ज्यादा नहीं करना चाह रहा हूँ कि जैसे कि आप भी स्टार्टिंग में इंट्रोडक्शन पे बोले थे कि इंडियन फेडरेशन ऑफ एप बेस्ड ट्रांसपोर्ट वर्कर्स आज एक पहला एक चुनौती इस कंपनी के सामने पूरी रखने की कोशिश की हमारे ड्राइवर्स हो चाहे डिलीवरी वर्कर्स हो जितने भी गीक वर्कर्स और प्लेटफॉर्म वर्कर्स पे काम करने वाले हैं इन लोग को लेके हम लोग ने इंदिरा जय सिंह जैसे बड़े दिग्गज लायर्स फ्रेंडली लायर्स जो लेबर के ऊपर काम कर रहे हैं उनको लेके हम लोग ने सुप्रीम कोर्ट के सामने दरवाजा खटखटाया पी आई डाल के अब हमारा एक हमारे सामने ये है कि कहाँ तक हम लोग इसके अंदर सक्सेस लेंगे कंपनीज को कहाँ तक घुटनेओं पे टेक के हमारे सक्सेसेस को हम हासिल करेंगे ये सारी चीज अभी अगले आने वाले दिनों में होने वाली है मगर एक चीज मैं यहाँ पे बार बार दोहरा रहा हूँ कि आज के तारीख में जो कंपनीज है चाहे वो सिग्गी हो जोमेटो हो अमेजोन हो फ्लिपकर हो डेंजो हो शेडोफैक्स हो जो छोटी कंपनी बड़े 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 स्थाई पे जा रही है आज वो सारे कंपनीज जो है बीते हुए आ, अगर जब हम आठ साल से बात करें तो कंटिन्यूसली हमारा शोषण करते जा रहे वजह क्या है बोले तो यहाँ पे इसके ऊपर पॉलिसी मेकिंग नहीं हुई इसके ऊपर कोई कानून नहीं बना चाहे वो ट्रांसपोर्ट सेक्टर से हो चाहे वो लेबर सेक्टर से हो चाहे वो आईटी सेक्टर से हो इन uh, 2021 में तो पार्लियामेंट में पास किया बट इम्प्लीमेंटेशन अभी तक डेढ़ साल होने आया अभी तक उसका इम्प्लीमेंटेशन नहीं हुआ इतना ही नहीं अगर जहाँ हम 
डिलीवरी बॉयज के जैसे स्टार्टिंग में आप कहे थे जैसे कि हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस को लेके उनके हेल्थ एंड सेफ्टी को लेके जो बात कह रहे जाए तो कहीं पे भी ये इस कंपनीज ने पूरी तरह से आ, हमारे जो राइट्स है हमारे को जो मिलना था वो सारे चीज से दूर कर दिए बिकॉज द रीजन आप देख सकते इन लोग ने पार्टनर बोल के सारे हमारे जो हक थे वो हक से दूर कर दिया जैसे कि डिलीवरी पार्टनर बोल दिए जैसे कि ओला उबर पार्टनर बोल दिए पार्टनर का एक दर्जा दे दे के जो है हमारे जो बेनिफिट्स है वो सारे बेनिफिट्स को इन लोग कंपनी ने तोड़ दिया और जैसे कि अब हम बात बता रहे कि जो कंपनीज ने कह रहे कि हम लोग छह लाख इंश्योरेंस देंगे पांच लाख इंश्योरेंस देंगे आज भी आपके आर्टिकल में बात निकल के आई कि मेरे पास ऐसे लोग जो डिलीवरी बॉयज है जो आप दस मिनट का समय लगा रहे पंद्रह मिनट का समय लगा रहे उनके ऊपर डिलीवरी आप फास्ट डिलीवरी देंगे बोल के कितना इम्पैक्ट गिर रहा हमारे वो डिलीवरी बॉय पे कि वो दस मिनट में रॉन्ग रूट जाना पड़ रहा है एक्सीडेंट फेस करना पड़ रहा उस एक्सीडेंट्स में माजूर हो जा रहा माने डिजेबल हो जा रहा पैर हार टूट के कोई जान से चले जा रहा क्यों इतना दस मिनट का ऑफर लगाने में क्या दस मिनट शॉर्ट डिलीवरी देने में क्या हासिल करना चाह रही कंपनी माने यहाँ पे ड्राइवर्स डिलीवरी बॉयज का जान जोखिम में डाल के और उसको प्रेशराइज करके क्या हासिल करना चाह रहे ये ये जो शोषण करना चाह रहे ना इसके ऊपर हमें आज के तारीख में भी अगले आने वाले दिनों में इस चीज के ऊपर बातचीत पे चर्चा पे जरूर लाना पड़ेगा ये जो कंपनीज है इतने प्रेशर में लाके वर्कर्स को जो डाल के प्रेशराइज कर रहे टाइम बॉन्ड के अंदर वो हमें सोचना होगा इतना ही नहीं ये जो भी ई कॉमर्स के ऊपर हम लोग काम कर रहे हैं ये पूरा जो है रेटिंग के सिस्टम पे डिपेंड होके जा रहा ये रेटिंग सिस्टम से भी बहुत सारे हमारे जो हक है जैसे कि सोचो के कस्टमर से कंज्यूमर से बहुत सारी बार हमारे को यही डराव निकाल आता कि आप अगर जा जल्दी नहीं लाएंगे तो हम आपकी रेटिंग कम कर देंगे ठीक है ना अगर जा आप आते आते कोई दूसरा काम बोल देते कहीं आप सिगरेट लाना होगा एडिशनली ओके okay, आप आते टाइम थोड़ा सब्जी ले लेके आना नहीं तो आते टाइम ये ये चीज पकड़ के लाना ये उसके अंदर रहता ही नहीं ये एक्सेसिबल नहीं है फिर भी जो है डिलीवरी बॉय अपने रेटिंग के लिए कहीं ना कहीं मजबूर होना पड़ रहा और वो लोकेशन कहीं और लगाता और कहीं बुलाता डिलीवरी लेने के लिए ठीक है ना और कैब की अगर जब हम बात करें टैक्सी के सेक्टर में ओला उबर में कोई गाड़ी बुक और करते कोई गाड़ी पे चढ़ के जाते कोई और है तो ये सारे जो है लीगल टर्म्स एंड पॉलिसीज के अंदर उनकी आई ब्लॉक करना छोटे छोटे कारण पे उनको रोजगार से बेरोजगार कर देना ऐसे मुद्दे बहुत सारे आज के तारीख में पीक इश्यूज है देखिए रोजगार को बेरोजगार करना कंपनी के लिए बहुत आसान है बेरोजगार को रोजगार करते बोल के ये जा रहा सारे जो कंपनीज थे गिग इकोनॉमी काम कर रहे वो सारे लोग ने कहा था मगर आज आप देख सकते बहुत सारे लोग को यही कंपनी वाले ने रोजगार को बेरोजगार बना रहे आईडीज ब्लॉक करके तो ये सारे जो मुद्दे है कहीं ना कहीं हमारे लेबर रिलेटेड है लेबर से जुड़ते हुए है इनके ऊपर कानून बनना चाहिए कानून किस एंगल में बनना कैसा कानून बनना कानून किस तरीके से मैं कंट्रोल रखना इसके ऊपर कैसा फ्रेमवर्क होना चाहिए ये कंपनीज का रोल क्या है गवर्नमेंट का रोल क्या है लेबर डिपार्टमेंट का रोल क्या है आईटी का रोल क्या है ट्रांसपोर्ट का रोल क्या है ये सारे चीज हमें एक बैठ के एक अम्ब्रेला पे काम करना जरूरी है गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया हो चाहे स्टेट गवर्नमेंट हो अगर जब हम बात करें तो ये सारे कंपनीज जो है आज तक जैसे कि पार्लियामेंट में कहा कि हम लोग इनका नेशनल सोशल सिक्योरिटी के अंदर बोर्ड बनाएंगे वहां पे दो परसेंट से से जो है इन लोग का डेवलपमेंट के ऊपर खर्चा करेंगे और इनके वेलफेयर पे खर्चा करेंगे कंपनी हर राइट पे सर हर राइट पे हर डिलीवरी पे 20 से 25 परसेंट पच्चीस से 30 परसेंट ले रही इंक्लूडिंग जीएसटी के साथ अब तो, तो क्या कंपनी से आप एनिवल टर्न पे टू परसेंट वन सेस मांग रहे क्या ये है आप कंपनी को बड़ा के सेस लेके वो डेवलपमेंट का जो अमाउंट है वो हमारे डेवलपमेंट पे लगाइए ना हमारे वेलफेयर पे लगाइए ना हर स्टेट के अंदर स्टेट का वेलफेयर बोर्ड भी बनना चाहिए चाहे वो पूरा गिग वर्कर्स का वो क्या बनाएंगे कैसा बनाएंगे उसका स्ट्रक्चर क्या होगा पता नहीं अभी तक किसी को भी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया सामने आना होगा इसका काम जल्द से जल्द करना होगा पैंडेमिक से पैंडेमिक के बाद पार्लियामेंट में जितने भी बिल पास हुए वो सारे बिल पार्लियामेंट के बाहर इम्प्लीमेंटेशन होना भी स्टार्ट किया बट यहाँ पे सोशल सिक्योरिटी कोर्ट का जो पार्लियामेंट में बिल पास हुआ उसका ड्राफ्ट बनने के लिए चले गया डेढ़ साल तक अभी तक वो ड्राफ्ट बना ही नहीं क्या है ये इसके बाद वाले जितने भी ड्राफ्ट बन गए निकल गए इम्प्लीमेंटेशन भी हो रहे 
तो गवर्नमेंट को इंटरेस्ट नहीं है या कंपनी की प्राइवेटराइज सिस्टम जो आप बताए थे प्राइवेट सिस्टम के ऊपर पूरा आना चाहिए क्या प्राइवेट के जो कंपनीज है एग्रीगेटर कंपनीज उनके हाथ में कंट्रोल देके उन्हों जो पॉलिसी बनाएंगे वो पॉलिसी अब गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इंप्लीमेंट करेंगी क्या ये अभी भी अधूरा सवाल का जवाब है गवर्नमेंट के पास हमारे पास तो इसके ऊपर जब भी पॉलिसी बन रही पूरी पॉलिसी बन के बाहर आएंगी आप जैसे लोग हम जैसे लोग इसके अंदर इन्वॉल्व होना आवाज उठाना और इनके जो भी लूप पॉइंट है ऑलरेडी इंडियन फेडरेशन ऑफ एप बेस्ड ट्रांसपोर्ट वर्कर्स आईफेड के तरफ से आप सबकी सहमति से हम लोग ड्रॉफ्ट भी दे चुके हैं केंद्र सरकार को क्या हमें होना है गिग वर्कर्स को अभी तक उसका भी जवाब सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट से नहीं आया तो अभी वेट एंड सी करना है देखना है कि अगले आने वाले दिनों में इसका क्या नतीजा हल निकल के बाहर आएगा बस आप सबसे भी ये पूरी उम्मीद है हमारी ब्लेस करिए दुआ करिए अगले आने वाले दिनों में जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट में हमारा जो पी डाल के है हमारे हक वहां से मिलके हम लोग जरूर हमें तो पूरी उम्मीद है सुप्रीम कोर्ट के चीफ जस्टिस पे कहीं ना कहीं हमें इंसाफ होगा इस कंपनीज के अगेंस्ट में थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू शेख जी मैं अंग्रेजी में बोलूंगा क्योंकि मेरा हिंदी इतना ठीक नहीं है शेख जी ने शेख जी हैज यू नो लेड बैर द काइंड ऑफ ट्रैप द गीक economy workers are have been put into on the one hand they have the platform capitalists who are pushing them through i mean it's a kind of a you know i mean one is reminded of the assembly line kind of pressure that we saw in pictures like modern times of charlie chaplin i mean the i mean you increase the you increase the speed of the assembly line assembly line process and then the workers will have to uh, increase uh, increase their uh, mechanical activity so that that kind of a that kind of a thing that one is uh, uh, one 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 is observing with regard to the labor processes that are at work in the gig economy push 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 deliver fast to do it because the consumers are waiting i mean there is there a false sense of alarm that this platform capitalists are creating a kind of a pressure and the second one is that this incentive is a big trap they give incentives pull them into the whirlpool get them indebted and change the incentive structure in a manner that is disadvantages to this uh, gig economy workers so they are, on the one hand they are caught up with huge loan amounts on the other hand they have to deliver the kind of uh, you know the 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 workload that is uh, you know a, a, a huge workload that this uh, platform capitalism imposes so they are caught you know between this in this trap on the other hand there is an that there are impatient customers who are brandishing their weapons of uh, rating uh, systems to demand as he said bring give us additional services lest you shall be rated badly so the gig economy workers are caught up between two agents of capitalism on the one hand the capitalists who have founded these platforms on the other hand the consumers who are the financiers of this kind of consumer capitalism so what sh what should they do so the government has not come forward with anything credible notwithstanding the fact that these gig economy workers unions which are coming up fast uh, have provided so that is a third trap that they are they need to they need to look they need to go to the state meaning the government as well as knock at the doors of judiciary we hope shake by that the supreme court uh, will deliver some uh, some some position some judgment which is favorable to which would uh, uh, which would prove some solace to the sufferings of millions of gig workers and and as if the predictions of the industry are true the gig economy will be the huge workforce uh, you know in the future to future to come so uh, he, he has asked for blessings and we sh we shall give him ideas and we shall give these gig economy unions intellectual strength mobile uh, uh, you know public support and at the same time i request the gig economy platform unions to mobilize consumer opinion to work with the consumer public welfare bodies consumer organizations so that ngos and others so that together 
they could mount a kind of a credible opposition to this platform capitalism. Thank you very much, Sheikh Bai, for giving this perspective. Now, I, I, I see that Dr. Sonia Jaj has joined us. Uh, Dr. Sonia, are you able to, are, are you there? Dr. Sonia? Okay, uh, in the meanwhile, we have uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Sultan Ahmed, uh, who is uh, actor representative at the New Delhi office of uh, ILO, South Asian office of ILO. May I request Mr. Sultan Ahmed to share his views on the theme of uh, today's uh, panel discussion. Over thank to you. you. Thank, you. thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Shamshundar. It is a privilege for me actually to uh, talk with you and uh, Professor Avi Josh and uh, some other colleagues, those who have past field experience like uh, Sheikh Salahuddin and everything. Uh, thanks, uh, IMPRI, to give, uh, invite me and this initiative has given me the opportunity to listen to Professor uh, Josh. And I have a regular interaction with uh, Professor Shamshundar, so I know that uh, his thought and everything. I am not here actually to make any recommendation for the trade union because Indian trade union, as you mentioned, that uh, it is 75 years of the independence, but Indian trade union has 100 years of history. Last year, actually 2019 was the 100 years of the Indian trade union, undivided Indian trade union movement. And they have still the much uh, matured leadership, uh, capable leadership, they have the history, what uh, Professor Abhi just mentioned. I don't want to mention this repeated again. Uh, I want to speak some word from uh, three of you that very rightly Professor Shamshinda mentioned some folk ideas, especially the identity crisis. The, this whole thing actually, the uh, present status, extent of the trade union movement and recognition of the trade union movement actually now lies with this thing. Because day by day, because of the informalization, expansion, platform and everything, day by day actually union losing, the workers are losing their identity. They are no more workers. There are confusion many. And, not only the gig economy workers, I'm telling you, there are huge number of educated youth uh, junior professional workers. Those are also like ASHA workers, they say volunteer, gig workers, they are saying that uh, they are the part of the uh, corporate house or they are not the employee. Then what about these IT young youth uh, you know, professional groups, those who are very junior engineer, junior doctors, bankers, and everything, and then others, uh, government service holders. There are many, many areas. That means day by day with very planned strategy, we are squeezing the actually area of uh, workers, the world of work. We are saying many, in, we are using many different, different terminology for that. And then we have essential service, we have security service, many things, you know, that trade union, they cannot join trade union, some cannot uh, go for a strike like this. So this is one issue, which actually we, the trade union movement, labor movement as a whole, need to take as a number one agenda. That how we can bring all the working people under the labor law coverage, entitlement that they can organize and bargain collectively, and they are, they, represent themselves, they can raise their voice, they can identify themselves, identify themselves that we are workers. And we are in, we, we build this country, we are the part of this development, we have the rights, which we achieved as what Professor uh, Abhi Joshi uh, just mentioned, that it is we, may, we achieved uh, by our sacrifice, blood and uh, long struggle. We are entitled for this. If you see now, I am in Bangladesh now, I am connecting from Dhaka actually, and I have seen some young doctors, engineers, and uh, IT professionals. Those are very young, and uh, they joined in hospitals, private hospitals, bank, and everywhere. You know, their average working hour is 12 hours, and that is declared. That it's not that they are saying that, okay, you are uh, eight hours and four hours, like, like this. this. They don't have any ways of structure. Yeah. 
same time same thing last month i two months back i was in uh, hyderabad where uh, shak salauddin was also there the driver who actually uh, i heard from the airport to uh, drop me in this seminar uh, area seminar venue and i tried to understand from him that what is the status of this thing he said that their duty is 24 hours and he has no grievance for that he thought that is the system so the surrender habituated with the system which is totally inhuman which is totally against the our uh, rights recognized rights who our our previous uh, generation uh, accepted that is a very dangerous thing you know that we think that this is normal this is we need to accept it so this is one thing second what professor uh, Uh, just mentioned that focus if you allow me my observation i know there is a very experienced person is here but my observation last at least one decade there are a clear strategy planned strategy to shift the union movement focus from the original focus to others there are there are many terminology we have now it is we are not using collective bargaining we are using social dialogue i have no problem to use social dialogue but when you say social dialogue and we limit our definition don't clear the uh, social dialogue definition that what actually social dialogue how it lead to support the collective bargaining we feel that arranging some seminar arranging some discussion arranging some you know meeting is enough for these things so this is uh, you know one area where, how we can shift the things how we can shift our trade union labor movement focus from you know what professor just mentioned the political mobilization to some you know home based meeting you know regular uh, discuss sub sub discussion against the mobilization word we are not using this nowadays sometime hmm. i am not saying that it's on the ilo it's on the trade union movement it's on the international global trade union not that as a whole is like this no we are uh, now the uh, focus on development csr like this this thing so there are many areas where actually the tendency to shift the labor movement focus from their conventional classical right based mobilization mobilization based uh, you know activities to different different uh, area different different aspect different different issues so this is another word i think we need to uh, consider that how we can bring back ourselves we, those those who are the part of the labor movement even actra i consider all as the part of the labor uh, i don't know maybe professor josh can uh, you know correct me if i am wrong but i always uh, and i am from the labor movement actually so uh, the identity we need to bring all the working people in the world of work that they are worker they are entitled to be organized they are entitled to talk they are entitled to raise their voice and they are entitled to have all the rights which assigned by the labor movement throughout the history second we need to focus our basic fundamental rights and when is still when the world is debating whether the occupational health and safety is fundamental rights or not we can easily imagine what is the the crisis we need not to say many things on these things you know after all the disaster and everything is still after 100 years of ilo and 100 year, more than 100 years of the trade union movement we are still hearing that in global area global states people are debating whether occupational self health and safety can be considered as fundamental rights or not so we need to go long and we need to go actually further to go together uh, beyond the all the discussion all that analysis we are using nowadays and i can say just uh, two things that actually to need to restructure our all the activities you know strategy and everything that how we can reach these vast workers those who are not feel that they are workers those who are not recognized as workers like agriculture workers like uh, you know platform workers and every other workers we need to identify their status without this and still that is lacking i can say 
I can tell you. Still, we think that with, with our present uh, strength, uh, we can continue with this, uh, our uh, movement and everything. We can't, we can't. But that does not mean that we shift from formal to informal. Because formal is our stronghold. We need to build our capacity there. We need to strengthen our will. We need to be stronger there also in formal sector. But we need to reach to vast majority of the workers, those who are not organized. So this strategy one. Second is we need to strategy that how we can build our capacity to deal with this, all these new technology, new you know, development paradigm, development agenda and everything. Now, we are dealing with the labor ministry, but many issues like, uh, you know, many issues come, what, what I mentioned about that, the shifting from workers rights, that now there are much discussion about corporate social responsibility, about this even, uh, you know, uh, covenant and other things, you know, social and uh, guide, uh, human, you know, the guiding principle for the business and human rights. And those are actually dealing by other, other another ministry, other ministry, other UN agencies. So trade union movement has in dilemma that actually there are labor issue, but deal by other ministries, other UN agencies and others. So we need to actually uh, equip ourselves with different, different tools so that we can deal with those issues also with different, different stakeholders. We can bring all the actors together to do the things. And last I would say that, you know, these another shifting I feel that solidarity and volunteerism. If you see, if you go back 10 years back or 20 years back, if there is any problem, if there is any violation in jute industry, or bank industry, if there are any movement in bank industry, there will be solidarity action from textile industry. If there is any violation, any movement, any union movement in mine industry, any accident in mine industry, there will be solidarity action from uh, bank industry. This is no more in South Asia. I don't know in other countries, but South Asia, solidarity is a word, is one of the main factors of trade unionism and main factors of trade union strength is almost gone. So this is one area we need to bring all together. So one, we need to stand for each other. And another one is volunteerism. Because it's becoming like this, that uh, each and everything is uh, on payment. Hmm. And uh, if, we mobilize, if we want to mobilize the people, we need to expend a lot of money to these things. That trade union movement cannot do it. So these all the things actually we need to consider for a way or for a and if you, as Sonia is here, so from ACTRA, we actually trying our best in the last two, three years. We set up, we support Edna to set up workers information and support center after this COVID to reach to the vulnerable workers, those who are not organized, those who are not unionized in Chennai, in Mumbai, in Delhi, and in Bihar. It has started and we will expanding these things. We actually, in last December, we, uh, have uh, South Asian uh, exclusive training for the occupational health and safety volunteers. We, we actually tell them that you are the volunteers to do the, to advancing your advocacy, to promote the trade union movement, to advancing the issue of the labor uh, workers. And where we invited a person like Sheikh Salahuddin, we invited our women activists. Those are not yet to be not in organized. So we invited domestic workers, from around the South Asia. So these are the things I think the uh, word we can focus, we can think to re ourselves, how to go ahead, go forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thanks again to give me the uh, opportunity to listen or hear from you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sultan, for, uh, for, for, for this uh, fine encapsulation of this uh, major issues and uh, uh, you have in fact set out the agenda in a sense. I mean, uh, taking on from what I uh, said and what Professor Joe said, you made a very fundamental plea, uh, even a fundamental, you know, you, you gave a fundamental argument uh, which should uh, provide a tremendous amount of energy and legitimacy to the labor movement. 
It is the labor which contributes to the economic process through sweat and blood, a phrase used to by Professor Jose. If this is, if this could be recognized, then on this on this very important socio-economic political premise, the entire re-strategizing that you talked about could be built. You also spoke about a planned shift in the focus. Of course, as academics, we were wondering when ILO, um, you know, disbanded the term collective bargaining and brought in social dialogue, removed industrial relations and brought in social dialogue. We as academics were wondering what the ILO was doing. That, I mean, social dialogue and collective bargaining cannot be one and the same. Collective bargaining has in inherent in, in, its, in its system, philosophy and perspective, the right to strike, where a social dialogue, as Saros Kuribila and others uh, have argued, and of course, Professor Jose also, has its conservative limits. So you, you, you just indicate it in a very subtle manner, the kind of shift that is, that are taking place. Again, you also emphasize the following Professor Jose that we need we need to go back to the rights-based narrative. And it's extremely, I mean, I'm, I, I, mean I, I agree with you that it, it, it becomes, you know, when the core ILO conventions were announced uh, sometime in the late 1990s, I, when I didn't find occupation safety and health as a, form, as a part of core convention, I, it, it really led me wondering as to, you know, what is ILO talking about? It is a life, the, 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 the safety, the, you know, the right to earn wages would depend on the right to occupational safety and health. And that is not recognized as the fundamental human right or core convention. And then of course, as an economist, I realized that it would have economic implications. So anyway, I reconcile uh, uh, in, in my manner, but thanks for flag, flag I mean, uh, thanks to IDUC and thanks to COVID, OSH is now resurfacing in the global dialogues as, uh, you know, uh, to gain the legitimacy to be called, uh, to be packaged as one of the fundamental uh, rights, along with the freedom of association, collective bargaining, forced labor, bonded labor, child labor, and uh, uh, you know, equity, gender equity. Thanks for flagging that issue. But the one, one, one thing that you said, you know, holds very important is that uh, the trade unions, when they deal with the, the state, they do not deal only with the Ministry of Labor and Employment. Narega, if you want to ask for right to livelihood in the rural areas, we, we need to go to the Ministry of Rural uh, rural development. We need to talk about women's rights. We need to go to the Ministry of Women and Child and Development. So we need, I mean, labor administration by its very nature is multi-dimensional or multi-ministerial. So in that sense, the trade unions, uh, you know, probably need to have some kind of a training by ACTRAO as to dealing with multiple ministries. That is something that I always felt uh, that the trade unions need to be equipped with. And of course, you talked about capacity building. That could be one of the capacity building exercises, Mr. Sultan, that trade unions need to understand and uh, device strategies. Dealing with ministry, you are on a, uh, you are on a you know, same, you are on a you know, familiar path, but dealing with the Ministry of Rural Development or uh, social welfare or tribal welfare, tribal, tribal welfare and others, we are on a, you know, we are on a different, different uh, surface. And overall, you talked about re-strategizing and uh, claiming back the lost uh, spaces and all other things. We are thankful to you. And of course, uh, ILO ACTRAO, um, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with the kind of uh, interventions that uh, you, 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 you and your uh, unit has been making. And, and Sonia, of course, is here. Dr. Sonia Jaj is, of course, here. She would be able to throw much light on that. Thank you, Mr. Sultan for uh, really uh, you know flagging the what what can i say the the the, the issues which 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 are traditionally swept under the carpet which are not convenient issues to talk about and you brought them to the uh, to, on the on the social platform 
to say so. And now uh, may request Dr. Sonia Jaj to uh, outline the challenges that as she uh, who has been trained, I mean, I mean, has been she is a leader in the uh, in organizing informal workers uh, for a long time. The challenges faced by the informal economy. Over to you, Dr. Sonia Jaj. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Professor Sham, uh, and uh, also uh, IMPRI and other organizers for uh, organizing such a contextual discussion. Uh, I'm sorry I could join only late, but I was hearing it through Facebook, the Facebook live I was hearing from the beginning. Uh, so uh, I think uh, Professor Sham and uh, um, uh, Mr. Joe's uh, and the respective Salauddin and uh, uh, Mr. Sultan, all of them have explained different aspects of the topic. So maybe I may narrow down to my, my own experiences and my own uh, understandings on, on this particular topic, you know, paper movement in its uh, you know, 75th, 75 years and the challenges uh, that we have to see. Maybe I would like to start from Professor Jones has said no. He beautifully explained the history of the trade union movements, the labor movements uh, in the world, and also maybe at that juncture uh, in the trade union history in India. So maybe as a person representing the informal economy, you no. Know, uh, I'm curious or I'm happy or I'm interested to trace that trade union history or labor movement history uh, from the organized to the in, to the unorganized, from the formal to the informal. You know, when you look at SEVA, it means the organization that I represent uh, you know, for the last uh, 21 years, I work with SEVA is uh, celebrating its, its 50th anniversary this year 2022 so this is the 50th year so when you go back to the history of seva and where it has started from the textile labor association started by initiated by anasuya ben no uh, no in the early 90s and from there how seva has started no the the significance of seva such a movement to organize workers who have lost their livelihood, who have lost their jobs in the in, in the formal sector. So maybe I think we should start with you know, that that context where you no know, uh, where Professor Jose has explained you no know, after globalization what had happened or after uh, you know the new economic policies uh, and uh, liberalization and. Uh, know the neoliberalization policies that have been accepted all over the world you know what shift had happened in the in the context of labor that is important for us to understand so maybe the present the present history or the or the or the present uh, discussion present context of the of the labor movement is is no post 90s no post globalization uh, or post uh, liberalization. How have you know the labor in the world, the labor in the in a country like in a South Asian country like India that we could we could understand. So my my first uh, argument or or a hypothesis is that you no, know, I think the existing narratives and the existing normatives uh, know that we when we try to understand or explain labor completely is a formal framework. No, we talk about formal relationships. No, we talk about formal rights. Uh, no, we talk about, um, uh, so uh, Sultan Bai has mentioned a very, very uh, visible shift. No, how could we suddenly jump from collective bargaining to social dialogue? No, that was one, I think that was a very important discussion that we have to come back and discuss again. So, so how do we, understand the existing uh, normative framework where the word you know ILO ILO had uh, celebrated its 100th year you know, in 2019 and uh, you know uh, and then we were talking about you know a, a, a very strong tripartite system 
that is where the base of negotiations that we are thinking about. So in that tripartite negotiations, that tripartite, tripartite negotiations that have developed in, during the course of time, the organized labor had found you know, a proper place in terms of collective bargaining, uh, <clears throat> in terms of rights, in terms of organizing, and also in terms of finding proper social security for, for the sectors. No, it could be public sector, it could be private sector, uh, uh, no, wherever it is, means that, that the role of the employer, the role of the state, uh, uh, and, and the role of the workers with respect to these two actors were well established in all those negotiations and on, in all the 190 conventions that we are talking about all around the world means of ILO that had happened during these 100 years. So, so my first uh, thought or my first, uh, maybe a kind of reversal that I have to put before you is, you now how could we challenge this existing normative framework of organized labor relationships? Is there any way to address? Because you know, for a country like India, where majority of the workers, we say that, you know, are in the informal economy, uh, and we say that informal economy is growing in the in the in particular context. Uh, you no, know, the entire labor forces, you no, know, if you say apart from the six or five percent, it's informal. But what are the mechanisms that are available in this process of addressing the informality, you no, know, informal nature of the workforce? You no, know, this this informality is the process that had you no know, that 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 have increased you no know, during this globalization or you no know, new capital advancement that we were talking about and how the capital have been you no know, totally swallowing labor in the process of uh, you know, making uh, its its own roots in 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 the developing country so now we say you no know, the labor is global south that is what that is what we tried at them to say we talk about migrant workers where are this majority of migrant workers coming from they are from global south definitely but any of the present existing structures in the world or in the country a country in especially a country like india is there any structure to to raise the issues of migrant workers in terms of labor negotiations or in terms of social security or whatever we say very simple question any of the labor unions in the country do they have migrant workers as members that is that's a very simple question that we have to ask to understand the complexity of of this new forces that that are coming in next is when you talk about supply chains you know when you understand you know the 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 you know the ongoing struggles of the supply chain workers who are the least you know their workers supply chain they are no, somebody sitting in somewhere, leading a multinational company, owning a multinational com company, and the poor working sitting in you know, a, a very remote village in India or Bangladesh or Sri Lanka, working for them, working for their, you know, either garments or whatever that they would like to work as a peace rate worker. What is the relationship between that particular company on the top and the lowest star of workers. So this is another complex chain you know, that, that had been developed post globalization means you no, know, the production cost, you no, know, it has to be cheaper. That means uh, you no, know, the industry has to be scattered. The entire class, industrial class, male class society of labor, you no, know, it has completely dispersed you no know, uh, post liberalization period. That means we have to talk about no different forms of workplaces which are unstable means there are no stable workplaces there are no uh, permanent workplaces no the work has become temporary the workplaces kept on shifting no it has it is going from no cheaper to cheaper to cheaper places no that where it is where the labor is available and where the least production cost is possible so we have been looking and seeing that shift that is that is happening and the next in that context we were seeing you no know, uh, you no know, an increasing number of labor class which is which is you no know, coming up which is rising in in the labor force in the workforce you no know, where there are no employers employees are completely absent so so that there, there again we have to relate you no know, to 
this existing tripartite system where we negotiate with employers, where we negotiate with state, no, and we talk about you no know, a large number of workforce who who, who means ever in their life had any employer to deal with means means for example we may call them as self employed we may call them as you no know, at different levels contract workers or we may call them as you no know, home based workers or domestic workers you no know, or any categories that that we could place them in in that categories you no know, of developing and and the third one is that means employers means invisible employers or you no know, absenteeism of employers means employees are, employees are not present in that labor relationship and the third state where is state coming in this process you no know, we have seen this you know the post uh, liberalized you know economic and uh, political phenomena you no know, where you no know, the state is withdrawing from the responsibilities you no know, step by step in terms of labor rights or in terms of social security of of the citizens or or any kind of you no know, professor jose was talking about how do we enable a minimum social floor and going back my argument is that i think we need a new platform to discuss this this the scenario of informality the scenario of the existing worker situations for example again i say means the uh, no the gender disparity that 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 we have to address in the context you no know, for a country like india continuously for you no know, for the last around more than 10 years you no know, the participation of women in in the employment in the labor force is continuously you no know, deteriorating it's coming down is it true means you no know, the kind of framework that we have established you no know, to to take out the data you no know, uh, or to represent women in the workforce you no know, is it enabling the participation or is it enabling the visibilization of women in the workforce that we have to start understanding because home has become a workplace and home is not a workplace in any of the industrial relations in any in any of the industrial relations establishment rule or law in the country so that means increasingly home is becoming workplace and more and more women who are working in the home they are completely displaced or no disappeared in this no kind of enumerative process that is happening as part of labor force participation survey or nsso surveys or whatever survey that is taking place taking place in the process so the new forms of so one one thing we have we have understood clearly that you no know, the capacity we have talked talked about you no know, we talk about recommendation 204 where you no know, there should be you no know, a transition towards formalization of the informal workers but i think in a country like india those processes are very complex means you no know, with the context of increasing in informality and we have seen you no know, last two years how covid has displaced you no know, majority of people especially women workers from the workforce you no know, how do we talk about transition I mean, is there any space to any structural space to talk about or a political space to talk about transition in this process no even there are no jobs means unemployment is increasing so how do we sustain the informal labor workforce that is very important for us a challenge for us in this context how is it possible means what are the new narratives and what are the new norms that we could frame in this process no for example we for a country like india we have been talking you no know, for last 15 years a policy for domestic workers it's not it's not there still no that means the existing normative trend is not allowing for a policy for domestic workers that means employers all of us sitting here maybe majority of us sitting here are employees of domestic workers it starts from president or prime minister or whoever it is so that means the employer negotiation with comes to the structural negotiation it becomes impossible in that discussions so where are we finding can domestic workers find trust in tripartite discussions that is the main you no know, structural challenge that i would like to take you no know, expose at this at this stage so that is why there is nothing is 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 you know uh, facilitated in this process so that is these are the structural challenges that that i am addressing at this the normative challenges that i am addressing at this process so from this point you no know, from this structural complexities you no know, to representational complexities you no know, 
to the rise that we are seeing in terms of minimum wages. Now we are talking about a floor wage. You know, who is going to access the floor wage? Means the least, the marginalized, the vulnerable workers uh, of this country is going to access the floor wage. That means they are not going to uh, be entitled or to have the right to uh, no, entitled the minimum wages that is or minimum living wages that we are talking about in the process. So that is that is again a structural issue that 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 we have to talk about. Social security that is a big question. You no, know, COVID has exposed you no know, all this the migrant workers, the domestic workers, home based workers. You no, know, none of them had any kind of the state couldn't offer any kind of support after repeated. Uh, you know, please from the trade unions or from civil society organizations to support the workers because there are no mechanisms to enable social security to the workers. No, that is why I'm saying, you no, know, what is the role of if a president, if the president of India is an uh, employer of a domestic worker, he or she has the responsibility, or that person has the responsibility, you no, know, to consider. A worker who is working inside their home, you no, know, as a citizen, as a worker, you no, know, with equal right in this country. So, what is that person's role to the social security? What are the forms that exist to contribute to the social security of that particular classes of workers? That is the only possible way, you no, know, to rethink or restructure. I don't even say restructure; it is destructuring that that should happen in this process. So, I think the existing structures. No, no, the existing normative uh, discourses that that we are propagating. No, we want to just uh, no patch up or squeeze in the rights of the majority of workers into whatever existing form. So I think I'm arguing that it's not, it will not allow any of the workers, informal workers in the countries, you no, know, for any kind of entitlements if we are trying to do that. So what is and, and the last one that I would like to say is uh, the trade union, the process of organizing means what are the limitations of it? You know, as a, as a person representing SEVA in most of the trade union negotiations platforms you know, in the country, I know the limitations of it because again, this problem is the problem of trade unions also. Trade unions in this country are existing only with the support of the organized workforce. They have existed they have formed, you no, know, they have negotiated only for you know, the formal workforce. That means the existing negotiations, collective bargaining process is not at all applicable to the informal workforce. So that is why, you know, why organizing domestic workers or organizing home-based workers is not a priority of any trade union in the country. It's because it's not that they don't like or they don't want, but know the existing structure, negotiation structure, no existing history or existing, no, uh, no, they are not able to reflect on on where, where we are standing, the crossroads of you no know, organizing, and you no, know, uh, where the challenges, how do we understand or how do we again destructure the union process, you no, know, in order to address majority of the workforce in the country. So I think. That is where no, we have seen we have seen many mushrooming of many small unions that you know that 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 is not at all affiliated to any of the major unions that is happening in different parts of the country, you know, and they are not recognized as unions. And now, you know, for example, if we, in the state rules means according to the 1926 Trade Union Act and the state rules of that particular act. No, if we go and register for a trade union of self-employed women, self-employed workers, that will not allow. We will get completely you know, rejected at each stage because you are not eligible to register as a trade union. So these are fundamental structural issues that you know, in terms of collective bargaining, I don't accept social dialogue, you no know, replacing cultural uh, collective bargaining. That is not. We need new forms, new models, new understandings of collective bargaining without employer, without state, or with state, or without state, no, or in that processes, no, who is representing whom. No, these are the processes that we have to understand and how do we develop these processes in terms of including you know, the most marginalized informal workforce, you know, the women workers, you know, workers who are 
who are part of the commons, you know, who are based on natural resources, uh, you know, to earn a livelihood, you know, who have been displaced, the migrants who have been displaced as part of the development processes that is happening in this country. So I think I will stop here. I think this debate should bring all these questions so that, you know, these challenges should be taken forward in our future deliberation, future discussion, so that, you know, how could, you know, the academia itself could develop you know, a framework to address these existing persisting challenges of the majority of the workforce in the country who are out of any of this process, existing structural processes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Sonia Jaj. Uh, I'm reminded of this classic Marxian uh, argument. So long the debate is encased within the capitalistic framework, everything, all, all questions fall to the ground because there are structural imbalances in the system, capitalist system. The same critic, I think, applies to informality. So long the, the entire, you know, the labor, the trade union movement, the industrial relations system, if all of them are structured uh, with, I mean, and, and are grounded, leaning on or based on the formal, economy, the formal uh, labor uh, uh, institutions, then how do we accommodate the vast majority of informal workers who are either invisible or visible, but not, uh, you know, given their identity? Again, it's a question of existential identity, institutional identity, and you have rightly questioned that the existing framework institutional, trade union, consultative, and various kinds of frameworks do not adequately provide or accommodate the concerns, the pressing concerns of the vast majority of informal workers, be they domestic workers or contract workers or migrant workers. Of course, everybody knows the uh, argument that cheaper labor cost has led to informality and informality again leads to cheaper labor costs. It's a kind of a vicious uh, circle. But now this, this debate has raised certain unconventional issues into my knowledge, if I have to give an overarching comment. Professor Jose talked about reinventing labor movement and going to the roots, so to say, and of course, uh, uh, to impart political consciousness to it. And Mr. Sheikh Salahuddin talked about the kind of modern entrapments that the gig workers suffer from at both ends, at the employer's ends and at the consumer delivery ends. On the other, on the other hand, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Sultan also interrogated the, the kind of re that has taken place both within ILO and outside ILO and the need to re-strategize and keeping the formal uh, economy workers as a kind of a fronting them with the shield and also bringing the vast majority of the army of the informal workers uh, behind them. And uh, Dr. Sonia Jarch completely, again, interrogated the very validity of the consultative framework called tripartism when the state or the employer do not, you know, when for them, there is no employer, no state kind of a context in which they are part in. And so that it is, there are structurally, there are structural issues in the entire, uh, let, let me put it as labor ecosystem for want of a better term, because industry relations, labor relations, employment relations, all this will not be able to, you know, capture the kind of complexities that Dr. Sonia Judge uh, threw at us. I mean, in a sense, they are gauntlets for all of us to, you know, to pick up. Now, before I uh, go to this, uh, uh, you know, the way forward and summing up, there are a few questions that have come on the chat box and on the Facebook. So I would like to flag them. Um, Nagarajan Krishnamurti, Mr. Nagarajan, Krish I think Dr. Nagarajan Krishnamurti has asked, what are all individual rights? What are all community rights? 
what are all the duties of individual to perform for the betterment of family and community what are all the community's duties for the betterment of the citizens this is a question he has asked anyone could answer but there are uh, uh, questions the uh, i mean which which could be asked um dr suchita krishna prasad has asked dr mr uh, uh, sheikh salauddin uh, do you have any thoughts on women in gig work and secondly would there be a difference between the conditions and hence strategies to be deployed for deliverers of goods as against deliverers of services ek gig economy workers rehta hai wo goods deliver karta hai dusra service deliver karta hai like a beautician ye unko organize karna hai unka mudda uthana usme kuch strategy mein aapko farak padega wohi question dr sujita krishnamurthy aap सुजिता किशोर प्रसाद आपसे पूछ रही है और दूसरा विमेन इन गिग इकोनॉमी यू नो उसके बारे में आपका सोच क्या है पूछ रहा है एंड देर आर क्वेश्चंस फॉर एग्जांपल सम पीपल हैव आस्ट व्हाट अबाउट ऑक्यूपेशन सेफ्टी एंड हेल्थ विल विल देयर नॉट विल देयर नॉट बी इंपॉर्टेंट यू नो टू टू एज अ कंसिडरेशन Uh, that's what ms ms chitra kanna has asked so i um, request the panelists to uh, kind of uh, pick and answer the questions or the concerns that have been raised by people by various people yeah uh, there is a personal question from uh, anima sharma to dr sonia jaj no that is i mean we we can we can uh, yeah chitrakarna's question has come now in case of accidents at workplace laws are being violated however we do not see effective enforcement how can it become a non negotiable agenda of trade union uh, with when 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 trade union negotiates with the company this is a question that ms chitrakarna has asked everyone so the questions are before you so uh, so i uh, may ask uh, professor josh to start answering each one i mean any question you can pick an answer yeah um, sir there is one more question i think it's also for uh, professor josh by pundlik patel it's just came in q and a sir in yeah, other please, can, you, can you just i will get it out sir in other countries lot of labor movements are started but still now in indian labor code changes very fastly but still no any movement are starting or seen so the country specific question so professor jos first um i did not get the last question maybe maybe i'll come to it at the end um shyam let me say i mean you know we raised all of us raised far too many questions because we don't have answers, answers. we are in changing times we are trying to examine the application applicability of widgets of institutions developed in the past to improve the the, the situation of people who need institutionalized safeguards but we are not able to apply them you drew the distinction between bargaining and social dialogue i mean you know taking cue from the the ilo specialist and the crucial question organizing which sonia raised and you know this is being without being offensive let me we 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 come across the basic question organizing for what and if you say organizing for bargaining that platform has shrunk over the years on account of the huge array of changes taking place in the workplace decentralization dispersion of the workplace and the the decomposition of the workforce itself meaning it has become um, diverse <clears throat> divided according to the skill content and the kind of homogeneity which existed in the past brought them under one roof made it possible to bargain on their behalf by trade unions these 
uh, circumstances do not exist in most cases. So what do we do? And when we talk about rights, all those extremely interesting questions about whose rights are we talking about? What rights? What about individual rights? What about collective rights? What about responsibilities? All those questions, the fact of the matter is right through history, there's one important lesson. Whoever exercised rights, these rights were not given to them. They had taken it. They had taken it, demanded it. And that was a lengthy process of consolidating their economic space based on which they strengthen their political space. That's what enabled them to demand the rights. And as societies matured, they were given, they took those rights, got them constitutionalized. It is this process we have got to make sure continues in our time. But then the odds are heavy, as again pointed out by Sonia more than anyone else that we are confronting a situation where we don't have people who are accountable, who are answerable, who, who would be prepared to, to respond. The employers are not there. The state is not interested. And we have this burgeoning workforce at the, at the lower end of the pyramid, devoid of, denied the kind of protection and safeguard which they require more than anyone else. And what do we do? And that's where I believe it has got to be part of a political process of strengthening their economic space. And to which the only solution I can think of is build a political campaign to increase the quantum of social spending. Social spending on education, on healthcare, on housing, on better quality living. That is what would eventually enhance their ability to bargain. And I might be saying counterintuitive things when Sonia's, I mean, she pointed out the, the declining, diminishing participation rate, especially of women. To me, the answer lies in making work more attractive to them, meaning pay them better wages, create better social security safeguards for them. That will make it possible to move out of the pressings of the household. Right now, we report a low labor force participation rate, but make them part of the paid labor force. And that means raise, raise their reserve price. Make it possible for them to come out of the pressings of the house and go for a better paid job. That means the entire society has got to work towards that goal. And that goal can be attained only, only when we raise the quantum of social spending. And that again is not a matter of limited resources. I still believe, and I sincerely believe that the society we belong to has abundant resources for initiating such significant social spending that in turn will raise their reserve price, bring them out into the labor force. I know I'm saying something which is immediately counterintuitive, but then I sincerely believe that raising the offer price is what would unleash the kind of explosion of participation in the world of work. But then let me not spend more time because we have exceeded the time but it was worth listening to you. Thank you. And uh, I greatly appreciate uh, having had this opportunity to talk to you, all of you like this. And I look forward to having more such opportunities in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Jos, for that. Uh, may I request Sheikh Salahuddin to respond? Yeah, thank you. या yeah, जैसे कि अर्बन uh, आज के तारीख में अगर जब वुमेंस को लेके देखेंगे तो गिग वर्कर गिग इकोनॉमी में भी अगर जब सेस्टसाई में देखें तो पहले बहुत कम था uh, बीते हुए तीन साल से अगर जब हम बात करें 
तो मुंबई दिल्ली जैसे सिटीज में बहुत सारे महिला गीक वर्कर्स में आना स्टार्ट करे ओला में ऊबर में काम करना स्टार्ट करे एट द सेम टाइम स्विगी जोमेटो में भी आ, काम देखने के लिए मिल रहा उनके लिए बट एक है देखिए अभी अर्बन कंपनी भी आप रिसेंटली देखेंगे गुरगांव के अंदर बहुत बड़ा प्रोटेक्ट चला था महिलाओं को लेके हंड्रेड वुमेन जो थे रात दिन महिला वहां पे प्रोटेक्ट कर रहे थे जो अर्बन कंपनी का बिहेवियर था उस वर्कर्स को लेके रात दिन रहते पर भी वहां पे लाइट्स बंद किया गया वॉशरूम्स को तक नहीं जाने दिया फीमेल वर्कर्स को ठीक है ना मेल ने फीमेल वर्कर्स के ऊपर भी जो आजकल के गीग इकोनॉमी पे जो कवर काम कर रहे हैं उन लोग सारे जो कंपनीज के हैं वो बिहेवियर देखे होंगे तो हमारा यही है कि हम लोग एज ए यूनियंस फेडरेशन हम लोग यही आ, हर स्टेट में यही कर रहे कि अवेयरनेस क्रिएट करना जैसे अभी सर ने कहा कि हम लोग अवेयरनेस क्रिएट करने में है और उनको रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन संभालने में है कानून क्या बोल रहा क्योंकि अभी कानून बना नहीं तो जब कानून बनेगा तो ये सारे चीज कहाँ पे लेके आके हम मर्ज करना होगा और कहाँ पे हमारी फाइट करना होगा किस सेक्टर में करना होगा किस जोन में करना होगा किसके खिलाफ करना होगा अब तो कंपनी के खिलाफ कर रहे बट गवर्नमेंट के अंदर कैटेगरी वाइज हम कहाँ पे करना होगा चाहे लेबर ट्रांसपोर्ट या आई ये कैडर हमें को मिल सकता आगे अगले आने वाले दिनों में हमें बस यही वेट करना है कि जब तक वहां से ड्राफ्ट रूल बन के नहीं आएगा कानून जब नहीं बनेगा गीग वर्कर्स प्लेटफॉर्म वर्कर्स पे जब तक तो एक कंपनीज को खुली छूट दे के रखी सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट ने तो अर्बन कंपनीज पे नहीं दूसरे जितने भी गीग वर्कर्स के ओपनिंग्स है कंपनीज के अंदर चाहे जो भी डिलीवरी सेक्टर हो ड्राइवर सेक्टर हो वहां पे थोड़ा थोड़ा वुमेन्स के लिए भी आना स्टार्ट हो गया इतना ही नहीं हम लोग हमारे यूनियन के अंदर भी इंडियन फेडरेशन ऑफ एप बेस्ट ट्रांसपोर्ट वर्कर्स के फेडरेशन में भी हम लोग ने महिला को एक लीडर क्वालिटी बनाना उनके पैरों पे उनको खड़े करना और उनकी अम्ब्रेला उनको फॉलो अप करने के लिए भी अपॉर्चुनिटीज दे रहे तो ऐसी हम लोग ने महिला की भी विंग वुमेन विंग की बना रहे हैं हम लोग वुमेन विंग का ऑलरेडी हमारे पास पैनल है वो चाहे टैक्सीज के ड्राइवर्स को वोमेन ड्राइवर्स ओला ओबर को लेके चाहे डिलीवरी सेक्टर्स के ड्राइवर्स को लेके मिलना बातचीत करना उनके इश्यूज को हाईलाइट करना जो कंपनीज के ऊपर वुमेन्स का एक अलग रोल है जैसे कि उनके मेटेनरी बेनिफिट्स क्या है उनके सोशल सिक्योरिटीज के अंदर क्या क्या कंपनीज ने अवॉइड कर रखा उनके लिए क्या आज के तारीख में असेंशनल जरूरत है और कैटेगरीज वाइज में भी वो होना जरूरी है मेल फीमेल के अंदर यहाँ पे बहुत सारे हेल्थ को लेके और सेफ्टी को लेके बहुत सारे टर्म्स एंड कंडीशंस डिफरेंट है क्योंकि अगर जहाँ एक वुमेन ड्राइवर रात के दिन काम कर रही तो उसका सेफ्टी एंड सिक्योरिटी क्या है तो एज पर एज इट इज वेर इट इज ये भी देखना है कंपनी का रोल क्या है गवर्नमेंट का रोल क्या है एट द सेम टाइम उसकी सेफ्टी क्या है और हेल्थ सेफ्टी क्या है जैसे अभी हम लोग बताए वेटनरी के बाद में और उनका जब टाइम होगा उसके ऊपर क्या है उनका लॉस ऑफ पे देंगे या नहीं ठीक है ये सारे चीज अभी भी अधूरे हैं तो इन लोग के लिए मेरा यही है कि उन लोग भी बढ़ चढ़ के हिस्सा लेके इसके अंदर काम करना चाहिए ऐसा नहीं है कि उनको कहीं साइड में रखना चाहिए बट हमारे साथ साथ हमको उनको भी खानदा मिला के हम लोग पूरा सपोर्ट कर रहे और उनके साथ भी रहेंगे हम थैंक यू डॉक्टर सोने जॉर्ज वुड लाइक टू रेस्पॉन्ड टू सम ऑफ देम any of them uh, uh no i would uh, i am interested in responding to this question of no why there is not such a movement in this country labor movement as no the labor codes are no fastly implicating implemented uh, i think that's a question that we ourselves are asking and the workers movement in the country as we critically ask ourselves means why it's so hap- it's not happening Uh, especially in the context of the farmers you no know, farmers movement you no know, the kind of success that they have you know achieved after you no know, an year long uh, struggle you no know, the labor movement means always the labor movement was in close uh, working in close solidarity with the farmers movement but why the labor movement is not able to work Non par with the farmers in terms of addressing the issues of workers or the labor courts means I I feel that the labor courts no it was it got uh, accepted very fast there was no such resistance no strong resistance from you no know, even the workers unions themselves you no know, at different stages it they very they got 
implemented it very fast and now uh, means and you know know in the parliament how they have been passed even without discussion so i think it it again goes back to the questions that i have raised means the labor force is not the labor union is not able to bring its workforce the informal workforce into you no know, the struggle path because you no know, we haven't been able to raise the issues of these workers we haven't been able to form you no know, models to organize these workers at large scales you no know, the informal workers in this country i think even the labor movement can you know couldn't organize even 10% of you no know, than 93% of the informal workers in the country i think that is a big question you no know, big reality to reflect on you no know, to look back and what should we do and how could we negotiate now the country is going to uh, have a two day strike you no know, what is it we are, ourselves will ask you no know, states like kerala or some other parts like maybe previously it used to be bengal or some other states no it will become standstill all other states everything will be normal so what will be the impact of such big strikes rather than no we have to reach to the workers we have to reach to no people no the mass who are the real workforce no whenever no we used to go for strikes no the formal sector workers no in terms of starting from the strike notice itself the unions will ensure that they will not lose their wages or any other rights at any point but when it comes to informal workers the existing system is not able to support or ensure the workers that you no know, if they don't go to work means they don't have any money they don't have any kind of support system that is working so the informal workers have to go to work means nobody is there to support those workers so that is a reality and how do we address that reality so that is that is very important for us in terms of social as josar has repeatedly pointed out you no know, the responsibility on social spending you no know, how could it apply to the mass you know the poor the vulnerable workers in the country you no know? how could this bridge be built up between you no know, this categories of people you no know, who are able to support or who are able to contribute to social spending that is very important for us and we have to discuss that that you know at a large scale you no know? we have been asking for domestic workers can I means is it possible to uh no keep 1% of the house tax collected in the country for social security uh no as social security for the domestic workers the government don't even want to think about those those kind of possibilities that then no that could be possible no we had a special flat says or we we could we had gsts at different levels no what contribution of that goes to no these workers who are uh, no you know the backbone of of the economy of this country you know they are contributing to more than 50% of the economy you no know? it's not that they are keeping away but i think when you calculate when you measure it you no know, with a proper with a new form of uh, you no know, calculation or measurement you no know, considering you no know, even the demographic transition i i'm sure that around 70% of the contribution comes at different levels because home based work it's not calculated at any levels of of you no know, economy domestic work it's not calculated no such kind of you no know, when you know, the so called menial works that we are calling unrecognized works you no know, those are not at all calculated in sustaining the economy you no know, in sustaining the productivity you no know, in sustaining the service uh, of this country so i think we have to take all this you no know, in order to you know the economists should sit together and calculate or or find out new measurement systems you know how this is becoming possible the labor specialists should come together or the labor, labor economists you know how could this convergence be possible so that is what i have to say and in terms of safety that is something that that have come up at many points in the discussions you know the occupational safety that you know the mainstream movements and the mainstream structure is facing that is completely away from you know the real occupational hazards that the workers are facing for example increasing violence no none of the occupational safety measures no have any system to tackle violence sexual violence or the, or or violence in work workplace nothing is have nothing is there so without considering that how could we talk about occupational safety in, in workplace or of workers so these are very fundamental questions you know that we have to ask in terms of addressing the rights of you no know, the informal workers i think that is that is that is what we have to go forward and once again thank you so much you no know, 
for making me part of this discussions and also part of this kind of discussions that is happening quite frequently. Thank you so much. And Thank thanks you, to be part of a wonderful panel. Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Sonia Judge. Uh, Mr. Sultan, would you like to share any, uh, any thoughts based on the proceedings? Thank you. Thank you. I think everything covered. You know, I don't want to prolong that discussion. It's very, very easy discussion. Only I can say that, uh, okay, there are three areas we discussed about the supply chain and whom to organize, why to organize. I think uh, at the end, we need to make political mobilization and political strategy to make national government accountable. Because whatever the TT, whatever the global uh, you know, policies and everything, that ultimately is depend on the national government, how they endorse this thing, how they introduce this thing in the respective countries. So, and also side by side, we need the global agencies, especially UN agencies and others, those who are dealing with the things, you know, to how to make actually all the global actors to bring them together as a, to make the universal, a strategy to accountable the global business and corporate house. So this is two things I need. We need to think. We need to uh, design our work in future how to do it. As I, I mean, I, I may not write um, uh, completely, but I feel that at the end, actually, it's national government who decide the things, and we need to deal with them through political mobilization. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sultan. Uh, I'm sure. Um, um, friends, that uh, we have had um, very insightful and quite interrogative and even provocative um, the discussions, thoughts uh, that are being shared by the panelists. And if, as uh, Professor Jose says, that we have asked far too many questions than discussing answers. The fault lines are there for us to see. For Professor Jos, it is fiscal progressive thinking that's required on the one hand and political mobilization on the other hand. For uh, Mr. Sheikh Salauddin, they are struggling for their fundamental existential recognition and they are knocking at whatever doors that they could look at, including the judiciary. For Mr. Sultan, there is a serious need to re-strategize both at the political level and at the national level. And for Dr. Sonia George, the whole thing is smacks of mainstream thinking and mainstream structures. Where is the space for the vast majority of informal workers? We do not have any institutional, social, political, legal, and any other processes to provide them even a sense of visibility. I just want to end with one thought. ILO has been sticking to this tripartite tripartism. And I believe that a kind of small accommodation has been made by giving, coining a phrase called tripartite plus. Will the tripartite plus satisfy uh, institutional players like Seva and Dr. Sonia Jarge, I do not know. So in other words, this panel discussion, which has been hosted by IMPRI, Indian Social Institute, and I know that uh, Father um, uh, Denz Denzel um, uh, is, is, George is there, I, I mean, uh, listening and also counter view. The, 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 the whole thing is that this panel discussion has asked very, very fundamental questions because the topic is so fundamental and so affected that we ought to ask questions. 
and I'm sure they will, the answers are there, answers would be there on the field and we hope we rejoin sometime later with more, with fewer answers, at least few answers, if not many answers. With these final concluding remarks, I hand over the, the process to Dr. Arjun Kumar. But prior to that, I wish to thank each and every panelist for making such engaging conversations on this wonderful, but to me, it's a perennial theme. It's not a one-off theme. Thanks a lot. And over to Dr. Arjun Kumar and his associates. Thank you very much. I stand enriched. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Kiar Shyam Sundar. Uh, and uh, I totally echo your uh, thoughts that uh, we all stand enriched by this uh, very, very passionate uh, deliberation that went on uh, on the labor movements in India at 75. So thank you so much. I would like to propose the formal vote of thanks on behalf of the Inkley Center for Work and Welfare, um, Indian Social Institute, New Delhi and Counterview. Um, thank you to all our participants today for um, joining us. I would like to uh, take the opportunity to thank uh, um, all our panelists, Professor uh, A.V. Jos, uh, Mr. Sheikh Salauddin, uh, Dr. Sonia George, Mr. Sultan Uddin, uh, Mr. Sul uh, Sayed Sultan uh, Uddin Ahmed, also, uh, Mr. Ashim Roy, he couldn't join us, though uh, he sends his greetings. Thank you so much to all of you. And most of all, uh, the moderator for this session, uh, Professor K.R. Shyam Sundar, thank you so much. It has been a, wonder, uh, a wonderful listening to all of you. And thank you for very succinctly summing up uh, the, you know, the session. So thank you so much. We are indeed very grateful. And uh, most of all, thank you so much to Father Dr. Denzel Fernandez for being here and listening to the uh, program and session uh, so keenly. I would also like to thank all our attendees who uh, joined in here on Zoom and they also posed very interesting questions and comments and also to those who are watching us on uh, Facebook Live and I would like to thank everybody in advance who would be watching us later on um, YouTube and um, uh, listening to the program on our various podcasts. So thank you so much and I wish you all a very good day, good evening and uh, take care of yourself. Stay safe. Stay safe. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.